Horror Stories in York, part 19. 4th of May, 1686, the gentleman highwayman Swift Nick. John Neverson or William Neverson was born in Yorkshire in 1640 and began his career as a highwayman. He was known to be delicate with the ladies, but an absolute brute to the gents as he robbed them. His claim to fame came in 1676 when he rode the 230 mile journey from Kent to York in a single day, a feat that was later misattributed to another highwayman, Dick Turpin. Neverson had committed robbery down in Kent and needed an alibi, so he rode to York full gallop and arrived just in time to play bowls with the Lord Mayor of the city who provided his alibi. His feat was deemed impossible and so he was acquitted of the crime. He openly boasted about how he had gotten away with it because he knew he couldn't be tried twice. His boastings gained him an audience with King Charles II who heard in great detail of his exploits and as Neverson exclaimed how he had ridden as fast as old Nick the devil himself. The king was so taken with his story that he gave him the name of Swift Nick. Neverson was now a celebrity, but he still continued to rob people. When he was captured at Leicester, he summoned for his friend to come and visit him in prison as his doctor. The doctor then proceeded to paint blue spots onto his neck, gave him a heavy sedative and told the prison guards that Neverson had died of bubonic plague. Fearing the disease would be spread throughout the jail, they quickly demanded that the body be taken out. Neverson was carried out in a coffin and made his escape. He used his now dead status to his advantage as news soon spread of how the ghost of Swift Nick was back openly robbing people. But his luck would soon change as people realized that he had actually faked his own death. The landlady of the inn that he would frequent turned him over to the authorities in exchange for the reward. Neverson was hanged at the York Tyburn on the 4th of May, 1686. His illustrious career as a highwayman largely forgotten in order of Dick Turpin nearly 50 years later. He was buried in an unmarked grave here at the church of St. Mary's on Castlegate. It is ironic that the body that would be buried next to him years later is supposedly that of Dick Turpin.